Can we talk quickly about Tenali then? Give your uh, your feedback yeah, the more, on the, the more ban. It goes on. Uh, so he was given a ten month ban. Ivan Tony was given an eight month ban. And it's very confusing because there's no justification given by the authorities to the public, which I think is only fair. Like, if we're going to support football clubs, we deserve to know what the criteria is. Ivan Toni, I believe, was given out by the Premier League. Tenali's was given out by the Italian League, but then FIFA sanctioned it. So... It, it's the, there's a lack of consistency because they're coming from completely different people. And I do feel like we've been a bit hard done by here because by by the accounts that we've been given, and again, I don't know everything, Ivan Tony was suspected of a bit of wrongdoing because of suspicious behaviour in football matches, which didn't add up. Tonali, on the other hand, has not been suspected of any wrongdoing on the football pitch. Obviously, off the football, as in corruption, mm. as in betting on himself to get a yellow card uh, or do it. Or he give bet it, on his own team, Brian. Yeah, he bet on his own team to win, Josh. Um, <laughs> what, uh, gonna talk, are we going to use first name, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> badgering the witness. We're badgering the witness. So, so wait, but you can't say that because he bet on his own team. No, but he, he, right. he has the beautiful thing about context is it does actually make a difference. <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm referring to is there is no... There is no context. Like with Ivan Tony, I know that there was talk on Twitter about this looks suspicious. But even still, with Ivan Tony, I have no knowledge of whether he really was a part of corruption. All I know is he bet. That is it. So if he bet, Tenali bet, then why is Tenali getting two months more? The the other thing as well is you look at the speed of the process, like how quickly the Tenali one went through, Outrageous. and it's like okay, guilty, fine, gone through very quickly. With the Ivan Tony one, he was playing football for God knows how many months. Was he actually playing Quite football for time, yeah. while it was ongoing, winning points for Brentford, points that could then potentially affect the other teams, affect down. To other teams going yeah, down? I think, and things I like think that's that. why it looks extra worse on Tonali though, because it's like it's like what you spoke about before. This guy clearly knew and was lying about it this whole time. No, I don't know if he. I mean, you don't, I don't think he did. He I did. don't know if he knew he was being investigated. There's a difference. So what we what what we're led to believe is his mate got investigated, his mate copped to it, and then pointed the finger at Tenali yeah. as a way of getting a reduced sentence. Mm. So let's just say he got an extra snitch. couple of months. Yeah, use the word mate lightly. Oh yeah, the absolute snitch, right? But the, the point is with Tenali is let's say he got that extra couple of months. Mm. That extra couple of months could have been so key to our season because it gets. To close to January, then we get the replacement. Then we're not down to basically the bare bones of a midfield. And I just think that Tonali's been treated unfairly based on everything I'm, I'm saying there. And I know people will be like, oh, the rules are the rules. Fair play, the rules are the rules. But surely if the rules are the rules, then the rules should be carried out in the same way for everyone. Mm. Were you surprised uh, by the reception that Tanali got? Do you remember when he walked around, he, when he was getting subbed on, when it, in the Champions League, he got like standing ovation. Well, really, it was after the game. Do you know what? I think that might be surprising to a lot of people and a little bit to me as well. Like, I think, I, I, I'm interested in what the lads think. Like, when Tanali's been banned for 10 months for pay, mm. And now we're going to lose him and he gets a standing ovation from the fans. What do you make of that? I wouldn't have been giving him a standing ovation. The, the fact of the matter is, is he knew, he knew it. He knew he was betting. He came to Newcastle knowing that he'd bet, knowing that um, he had this, uh, that was going to loom over him eventually. Because quite frankly, you always get caught on these things anyway. Yeah. I'm not sure and you he was do, quite happy. I mean... Uh, do you, uh, uh, just a quick one before you go on. Sorry, mate. Do we think that there's a good chance in all of the football teams at this table right now there's a better in there who is currently hiding the fact he's betting. Because yeah. I think there's every chance yeah. that there is. Yeah. And I don't I know think, about every team. And by the way, Most. when one of your lot gets caught, I'm keeping the same fucking energy. Yeah. I'm telling you. you know, I when, want a ban for 10 months. When Tenali no came sympathy. in, everyone was saying, ah, oh, you know, he doesn't look happy. Probably the weather up north. He's just done his bollocks on a 16-team accumulator. Yeah. That's why he's not happy. <laughs> uh, that's the thing. Well, I think I think the let's thing go is, back to the cheering. No, what did you no, make but of But the thing is, like, like, if I was Newcastle now, I'd be going down every single route I can to find out whether he and, and Milan knew about this betting scandal. Because if they did, but then, there's, the, some, there's some litigation that's going to happen. There's there's not, that, and all that's really messy do. because then by the time they would do that, say, how long does that process take? Nuts. If that process takes 10 months or something, oh. by the time they do that and prove it, he's available to play for him oh. again. Yeah. Yeah, but I want like, compensation. Like it's um, all about it's all about getting the money. Like arguably, you should be allowed some wiggle room in the FFP. I, like, I think that would be nah, fair. Nah, for, nah. for me, the, when I first heard about it, I was I was angry. I was confused. It was like talking to an ex girlfriend. <laughs> like got cheated on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but the, what I do want to say is, in 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 the cold light of day and having time to calm down, I know this might sound a bit weird, but I thought. 
who hasn't made a mistake and who hasn't thought, oh, fuck. And I think he must be feeling that right now. And I mm -hmm. think I think there's a, such a lack of forgiveness for something that um, isn't um, actual corruption. It's against the rules. But I think those rules are way harsher than they, they could be because they're scared of corruption. And I understand that there's that issue of you need to punish him to put people off. And there's a really, I don't know if there is a right answer. I don't know if there is a right amount of months. But for me, it's it's total lack of forgiveness and like it's just a, such a, a harsh punishment. And I'm looking at this lad going, you're now sitting on the couch for the next 10 months when you're an athlete. That's going to be really bad for you. And that's a, a mentally when you're an athlete and you're used to giving everything and getting that that buzz the endorphins all of that's going to stop it's going to be really hard for him and I just thought yeah I'm going to give him a pass on this providing one thing when he comes back I'm going to be on his fucking case because if he's not putting in performances immediately I'll be the first one but I'm going to give him a pass for this I think it's real testament to your fans though for supporting a player like that when it, and when in reality he may have known more than he was letting on and I think it does show that like your fan base unlike a lot of other fan bases would support a player like that well yeah, what yeah, I will yeah, say I so. yeah. I what I will say is would... Newcastle are in the Champions League we're in the top six if we were in the relegation battle not sure the sentiment but the would be quite the same no, be but, I, I, but, I feel but, yeah. like he's got more empathy than Ivan Tony ever did and I, I, I'm not quite sure why but the reality is is that he broke the rules that are incredibly well established and he did it internationally and then came here and I would definitely feel I think you're right in terms of like there's a real question mark of wanting to know and understand in your future dealings with Milan but also understand that in the come up as a big club you get ripped off by other clubs if one maybe, more question for the Chelsea boys because you're heavily linked with Ivan Tony. Mm. Right now, for me now as a Newcastle fan, I'm thinking every player we get, we got to fucking scream them for. Mm. For do you have a gambling problem? <laughs> Can I just be fucking clear? Yeah, mm. like I think everyone needs to do that it, now. Yeah, and That's I think more clubs is. than ever will be. Mm. But is there a, a a bit of a worry that this could happen again when you sign a player like Ivan Tony? I think there's always a worry if someone's got history, if they've got form for that sort of thing. But I don't think uh, again, right. It's like when, uh, say, for example, to use a boxing reference, it's like when Conor Ben fails the drug test. Eddie Hearn's probably sitting there thinking, well, at least we've got a while until anything like that happens again. <laughs> what happens? Dylan White, the next big fight. So obviously the, the main thing that I would sort of bank on there is I'd think surely it's not going to happen again Maybe. with him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But then you could be in a situation where if we signed him and we hang our hopes on him and it does happen again, we're almost thinking, how did we neglect the chance that that was a possibility? The fella's come out and said he's a gambling addict. But... Well, I, I, I really say, think no one's thinking about that. No, no desperate one. times call for desperate measures. <laughs> so find, I'll just, take him. I guess you've got a gamble. I just find that hilarious as well. As like as we're talking about this, I'm watching the game and you can just see Betfred advertising around the advertising That's a joke, boards man. everywhere while we're talking about this. It's I, like, I, I, there's the no accountability. Players aren't allowed to bet is absolutely laughable it was a bit in like that the, sense. I just think there's I, no accountability from the higher ups in football, you know, that want all the advertising mm -hmm. money from these betting companies. They throw it in, you know, customer's face mm. pundit like everyone everyone's face mm. and then when players turn around okay we know you got to show some discipline you're an athlete you're in a very um a very nice position in life playing football for one of these top clubs but still they are human beings I do empathise with, with them a little bit I'm not going to lie Are you worried about a re-offending of uh, Ivan Tony if he signs for Chelsea? I'm less worried about that to be honest with no, you I'm more worried about um, we him got... basically being a flop at Chelsea I could just imagine us taking another player like that in what's meant <laughs> to be the prime of his career and just ruining Nah he's not enough I'm to worry really, about nah, that's why I'm This really is all after about. yesterday the yeah. jadedness in your voice right now Ivan Tony would perform I have to say yeah. right I, I have to say, if you gave me a choice, I'd rather spend double the amount of money on Osman if we could. Really? I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. Osman's not going nowhere. I wouldn't rather spend the money on Osman. I, I just think like that Premier League experience and the proven track record in the Premier League is worth its weight in gold. I've got the mentality I'm gonna say as well. This, I'm going to say this now and get ready to clip this up because <laughs> it's going to be horrendous. I would rather have Tammy Abraham playing for Chelsea than I'd uh, than Ivan Tony. Right, why? So you have to explain why. You can't just why? say What that. stylistically, what part of his game makes you look at Tammy and thinks, yeah, yeah, I'd bring him back? This is no discredit to Ivan Tony <laughs> at all. I think he's a very, very good player. But I just think that we know, like, uh, Abraham at Chelsea is a known NC. We know what he's going to do. We know how good he is. We know what his weaknesses are. I just think that Tony hasn't taken that next step on and I worry about what the pressure and the mentality side of the game is going to 
going to be able to do and whether he's going to be able to do it at that next level. How many times have we seen this where there's been an amazing player that's played for a mid-table club, maybe sort of pushing on the European places and then they make that big money move and they're not what you But expect. I feel like he's stepped up his whole career. He's been one of those, mm. you know, those players that's kind of like proven doubters wrong his whole career. And he's played in the Premier League, like you said, so it's not too much of a... Done it against the big... This isn't he's done Dan, it against, this he's isn't been scoring against Danny big Ings, teams as Danny well. Danny Ings or Ricky Lambert. Going no, to the more importantly than that... Ivan Tony scored uh, 20 goals in 33 yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah. And when you say about Tammy Abraham, that, that sort of comparison there, the only thing you can say is we know what Tammy Abraham does in the Premier League because the Chelsea Tammy Abraham played at is not the Chelsea of today. It's a completely different personnel in terms yeah. of the squad, completely different manager. They got the same ground. They got different owners even since Tammy was last there. I don't think you can look at Tammy and go, well, we know what he does at Chelsea. I think there's more certainty with Ivan Tony. Uh, Ivan Tony has got to think about the, the way he plays. Like, I'm disregarding what he does in interviews and things like that in personal life. Just the way he plays, the way he carries himself. He's one of those players, which I was making a comparison, and please do not think I'm complain, uh, comparing him to this player. But when Alex Ferguson knew he needed to win the title back off Manchester City, he brings in Robin Van Persie. It's an absolute sure thing. Now, on a much, much lesser scale, Chelsea are now in a situation where we know we need a goal scorer if we to get ourselves back into European football and I think that that is that sort of comparison I can make there bring Ivan Tony in and I think like Brian said to me yesterday doesn't solve all of our problems but it, it helps the other X factor here is that he hasn't been playing for eight months he hasn't been able to train he hasn't been involved in football he's not allowed to step on been, the pitch he has been playing yeah but he's not he's been he, playing for Brentford B team he's not he's not well I mean bloody hell let's the get levels, the, invest, the, let's get the investigation <laughs> yeah it's not that. well that's not technically allowed so you know let's get the, the guys involved on in that but you know <laughs> like, <laughs> no let's not, not <laughs> Josh let's not get him involved we want to sign him <laughs> I just I just think there's a big gamble here where you've got a player of his age that is going to be coming back from the big pump. layoff. Josh, yeah. Josh. Jo- Sorry. The, uh, <laughs> Abraham scored eight goals in 38 games last yep. season compared to 20 and 33 with Ivan Tony. And I think with Abraham, I know you understand his negatives and his limitations, but like for me, Ivan Tony is one of the most complete strikers in world yeah. football. Like and I literally look at his game and I go, where is the the the, the weaknesses? I don't think there is any. I think there's yeah. things that he's not as good at, Abraham's but he's a complete striker, yeah. this guy. Yeah. By the way, he's 20 goals in 33, he was doing oh that. My God. Half of them half of them were um knowing the ban was coming. Yeah. So the mental fortitude to be able to even still perform. A lot of players when they know that ban's on the horizon and they've just been left out of a World Cup squad because of it and stuff like that, it can affect the one thing, he didn't care. He the, was still banging goals. The one thing that worries me about Tony and that does give some sort of uh, weight to uh, Josh's side of the argument, I think is Ivan Tony did kind of come out of nowhere and he did hit form. And sometimes that form can just... We, we've seen Marcus Rashford, right? It can it can just turn off, turn on. Me right? too. And, um, Unbelievable player at Swansea. Scored yeah, loads of goals. Yeah, there's, 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 one does have, wonder. But personally, I don't think that's what is the case with Ivan mm-hmm. Tony. But it is a risk. I think that's a fair point. Now, these players are playing for their livelihoods, man. This is like... Mm-hmm. I'm telling you... 